Hi everyone, welcome back. In this video, we are going to restore our validators database from uh, um, uh, a snapshot and uh, bring it to a fully synced state. So from start to scratch, let's see how quickly we can get that done. Um, presently, we are about 59,000 blocks in, if you look at the background. Um, and uh, perhaps by the time I finish speaking, it might be 60. So certainly, you know, getting up to 7 million um, or 7.2 million is quite a long stretch. So let's see how this goes. Now, I'm going to do this by a time trial. So what I would like to do is discuss a bit before and then just execute with um, discussions in between, you know, um, waiting times. So the first thing that we need to do if we look at the checklist to the left and if you're not seeing it clearly, up your resolution on on um, YouTube itself. Sometimes it defaults to 360p. Okay, so the first thing we do, we stop the Kusama service. We need to add in three lines or CLI flags or whatever the case may be to the service file. We need to ensure that 7-zip is installed. We need to switch the user to Polkadot and go to Polkadot's home directory. Now, Polkadot in this case is a user Polkadot and uh, I am uh, using this approach because it allows us to use the purge command, purge chain command in a native environment and any files that we restore would be restored um, with permissions for that Polkadot user, you know, so it's it's, I just found that it was um, a bit clean to use that step and I don't know the Polkadot user's password. So, you know, um, that's, you know, a, a kind of work around. Um, subsequent to that, we purge the chain, which is delete, which means delete the database. We download the snapshot, we extract the snapshot and note, I said modified path. There is a tilde in the extraction command given by pokershots.io. And while I do acknowledge that it should work um, properly because it means home directory, it didn't in my example. So I used an absolute path. Um, and finally, we exit and we restart the service. Once the service is up and running, you can clear or you can remove the snapshot. Um, I leave that up to you um, because I'm going to try to do this under the clock. So let us wait for 717 and then we start. I'm going to cheat a little and I'm going to just copy the first command and have it ready. And we wait. There we go. So the first command that I'm going to do is sudo systemctl stop kusama.service it's going to ask me for the password for sudo i entered it we can see that the instance stopped in the background we are going to edit the service file i am going to copy paste that command okay so the ones that we are looking for are these three we need dash dash database rocks db unsafe pruning and pruning um 1000 so i am going to whoops wrong editor yes yes so i have saved the file you may need to add in those three flags do it yourself and then we reload all of these commands are going to be in the description so don't worry the next thing is that we need to install 7-zip. It was already installed, so no biggie. This is the one where we are going to impersonate or you know switch user to Polkadot. So this command here, if I do a PWD, I'm in the Ansible home directory, I need to switch to the home directory of Polkadot because I don't have write permissions and uh, the next command would, you know, um, the when we actually download the file, it will give an error. 
So we are going to purge the chains. Now this is a, uh, oops. Note well that the, the left, the arrow keys don't work too well under this um, uh, switch user. Um, anyway, I, I won't get into that. I'm, I'm under the clock. So Polkadot, um, uh, that's the binary. We want to purge change, which is a delete the chain. And we specify the chain as the Kusama chain. We hit enter. We get the full path of the database and that is accurate. So I hit Y, enter. Database is removed. The next step is to download the database file. This one shouldn't take too long. And we have that downloading. Great. Yep. So while this is downloading, I will just chat a bit. Um, when I did the extraction, um, well, I, well, I wouldn't get to that part. This whole topic, I decided to do this because a, a friend, a colleague of ours in the 1KV program, he was an active validator and his validator, is his disk got full and his validator kept rebooting and he's in the active set. So um, the advice given to him was to restore, um, you know, he was running an archive node or something to delete it and restore via snapshot and it would take only 10 minutes and uh, you know that's good advice is given by the validator of nodes you know oh sorry the master of nodes the master of nodes sorry and um you know it's always good advice and um yeah but it didn't take us 10 minutes because um i was helping him through and we had a lot of hiccups so i decided to work through those hiccups myself and uh, um do a video and see if you know um you when you're an experienced user you know like well you these hiccups are easily overcome but um to us mere mortals you know sometimes um you know we need to get some experience or you know see it in a tutorial or something like that um to to easily overcome these things and when you are under the the, the clock or, or you're in a tough situation you know it can be even more difficult because you know in this case he's worried about slashing now he missed a session so he got a fault on the 1kv leaderboard but he wasn't slashed so that's something to note not that i encourage people to go offline for a session but um he was offline for a full session and uh, because of that he was not slashed because the rest of the validators were up and everything was okay but he got a fault um given the circumstances it could have been a lot worse that you know he could have been down for several sessions and got slashed and received faults so um you know i think you know um, everything went okay Hopefully with this video, none of you will have that problem if you have to restore. Okay, almost done. Okay, right. So the next step is um, a 7-zip extraction. Oh, I don't see the... Um, oops. I have to get the command from PokerShot, so I didn't copy it properly. So just allow me one to get that done. Not too good for my timing. Right, so I went to pokershots.io. I got the command and I am replacing the tilde with slash home slash dot okay and here is the command so 7-zip is the binary x is extract kusama dot rocks is the file that we just downloaded dash o means to extract to a particular directory and i have 
explicitly said where I want to extract to. There is no tilde or anything like that and I recommend you do the same. Okay, now we extract. So, all right. So what happened um, when I did the extract? Now there's that tilde and the tilde, as you would have noticed, if, I, if you do CD space tilde, it gets you to your home directory based on the active user. So um, when I did, when I first logged in and I went to the home directory, uh, logged in as Polkadot, I did CD um, tilde at some point in time to get me to my home directory. So one may think, and reasonably so, that tilde is a, re a representation of um, slash home slash polka dot, you know, one and the same. So the command as per pokershots.io should extract the database to the correct directory. However, in our scenario, it extracted to slash home slash polka dot slash tilde slash um, dot local and so on. So with that, the extraction process, which is perhaps the longest step in this entire thing, um, it took, um, it, ex it finished, but it extracted it to the wrong directory. So when we actually started back the service, it, it wasn't finding the database and it was starting from zero. So that was one of the trials and we actually extracted a few times. Um, we extracted first as Ansible user mistakenly and then we did the whole switch user, um, you know, to Polkadot and uh, we did the extraction twice there. Um, yeah, so that takes some time. Something to note as well is that um, maybe something I might suggest to the, the person who is um, hosting the images if it is when we compress there's like two two benefits right um, when we seven zip sorry we get a compression that's one and the second benefit that we get is that it's a container so it compresses but it puts everything in one file um, so perhaps for those of us who may not want to um, as we can see the extraction time is long if we want to speed up that extraction time, if we can get a bigger file um, and uh, one that's not so, um, the compression method, it's it's not as intense. So the file is going to be bigger, but it might extract quicker um, or perhaps no extraction, no compression and just um, compartment uh, container or compartmentalization. Um, if the the user um the pokershots.io host is is okay with that you know it might be a good option just to save a few precious minutes um yeah like if you're taping a video and you have people watching the clock and trying to see you know how well you're doing and so on yeah it it, it would have probably helped okay so it's just a matter of waiting. So I'm doing a technique here. I'm staring at the numbers and I think they're moving faster. And just as I said that, it's stuck on 61%. Yeah. So I'm gonna close my eyes now, perhaps. Is it moving any faster? No? It's also good that um, you get an idea of what, where the database is and uh, if you can do some of these trial runs yourself on a VM or you know some separate instance or maybe when you're offline <clears throat> you're not in the active set you know that might be useful. Um, being a validator is not just about um, you know setting up but it's about maintaining so you should have a fair idea of where everything's at. In the, in the next video, I'm going to do from scratch and in, um, restoring using um, a snapshot as well. So 
it might be worthwhile watching that one as well you may wish to fast forward through you know um but just to see the kind of timing that we're, we're looking at uh, as well i have some of these commands saved um on, in a text file you know you may wish to do the same you know so that you're not um, trying to call off some of these commands from your memory and you can do a quick uh, copy paste so we're almost there now in Windows when it reaches 99% it takes the longest of, of all so let's see if that happens here in Linux or Ubuntu and uh, no okay well that's good right so you may wish to note the size um, we started with 4.8 and it extracted to 9.4 gigs so we do an exit and we do sudo systemctl start kusama service all right we should see it pop up in the background let me make sure if everything went okay yep it's in the background before I could even check the service. Okay, and uh, note the block, 7,219,271. Okay. I believe we started at 17. So we are 13 minutes in. Again, the, the waiting time is really with the extraction and download, so if it is that you have a very you know your you have a good internet connection and um, uh, you have a fairly fast PC because this is just a VM um, you should move you know much you, you can save some time okay just for finality you know I'm, I'm going to wait for those 4000 blocks now I I considered using the WASM WASM compiled flag, but um, yes, while that would save me a few precious seconds, um, I would have to stop the service, remove the flag, reload the service file, and start it back. So you know, I I thought that you know just waiting a few extra would be would be worth it. two two three almost there I'm pretty sure we're gonna get there fairly soon so we are 14 minutes in I think we might be able to get it done in 15 Yep, probably the next tick or refresh and we're synced. So I would say 15 minutes in and that's not too bad. So I thank you for viewing. I hope this helps you and uh, that you don't fall in a crisis situation, but that if you do, you know how to restore quickly. Okay, take care. Bye.